Jones from our community music team, and we're super excited to tell you about some of the things we've been up to. Yeah, we've had the privilege of uh, leading worship down at Exponential, where it was fantastic. I mean, far beyond what we could even expect or imagine. We're also here right now at the 100 Conference, where uh, children all across Indiana are being blessed. It's been really amazing to be part of these moments where we're seeing people committing their lives to following Jesus and growing closer to Him, and to be led in worship by them as we're up on the platform. You know, it's a mutual conversation that we have as we're leading each other closer to Jesus. Listen, family, revival is here. Revival is now. God is doing something fantastic in this generation. And the cool part is he, He's also using CM through songs that we've written, like Make Room. We are so grateful for your support of our community music team. So thank you for being the church. What a beautiful example of how community music is able to bless the kingdom. What an encouraging way to start our time together. Hello and welcome to Community Online. Here at Community, we are committed to helping people find their way back to God. People just like me and people just like you. All of us are on a spiritual journey. And at Community, we believe that journey is better traveled together. If you are new to Community Online, a special welcome to you. By joining us today, you've already taken your first step, and we'd love to help you take your next steps. Just create your account at communityonline.tv so we can learn your name and reach out to you this week. If you've already created your account, go ahead and log in so we know who's celebrating with us today. And feel free to say hello in the chat or request prayer. We'd love to connect with you. And of course, today we want to wish all the moms a happy Mother's Day. You deserve many days for all the love, support, and tireless energy you pour into your families. We're grateful for you moms, and we hope you feel celebrated today. We also want to acknowledge that this day can be hard for a lot of women. For those who have lost your mom or wish for a different relationship with your mom, or perhaps long to be a mom yourself, I want you to know we celebrate you today too. Mothering is about more than just biology. Today we celebrate every strong, nurturing, encouraging woman in our lives. In a few moments, community's lead pastor, Dave Ferguson, is going to bring us the first message in our series, You Plus Parenting. But first, let's take a moment to give back to God. In 1 Timothy 5, Paul reminds his young apprentice, Timothy, that providing for our families is one of the ways we honor God. God calls us to be good stewards of the resources He has given us. That includes how we use our resources within our homes. One of the best ways we can faithfully manage this is by creating and following a budget. A budget is a great tool that actually frees you to be generous, not only to your family, but to God as well. So let's continue to encourage and challenge one another to be faithful stewards of what God has entrusted to us. At this time, I want to invite you to give back to God. You can give and set up your recurring gift by going to givenow.cc or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686. And now, let's begin our new series, You Plus Parenting. Parenting for me is one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. I feel like it's the most rewarding job on earth. It's also the most challenging. Every single child, every single teenager, every single one of us has a need 
to be seen first and foremost by our Heavenly Father, but we also have a need to feel seen by those that we love and those that we do life with. Happy Mother's Day. Let me add my appreciation to all the moms out there. Moms, you are so important and so loved, and we are so grateful for you. You know, raising kids, it's more challenging than ever. In fact, I warn new parents, parenting is exhausting. I mean, when they're preschoolers, you're chasing them around and it's just physically exhausting. And then when they're adolescents or teens, it's emotionally exhausting. And then when they go off to college, it's financially exhausting. So no matter what season you're in, parents, it's kind of exhausting. Talk about parenting being exhausting. Um, I was just in Brazil, and a nine-year-old kid, Emmanuel Marquez, decided to Google how to get onto a plane unnoticed, and then decided to try out the advice. He snuck out of the house early in the morning, found his way to a local airport, and then standing near adults so as not to draw attention to himself, managed his way through security and onto a plane headed to Sao Paulo. The kid traveled 1,700 miles before being discovered. When airline security finally questioned him about why he attempted the feat, he said he simply had family in Sao Paulo and that he hadn't seen him in a while and he thought it'd be nice to go and visit. That's a nine-year-old. Parenting is exhausting. And most parents I know are pretty desperate for parenting advice and wisdom. That's why today we're starting a brand new and very important five-week series where we'll offer practical parenting wisdom straight from the Bible. And we're calling this series, You Plus Parenting. And it's all about helping our kids and students experience something that most of us never had growing up, a flourishing You Plus life. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's the You Plus life. It's a life lived in the kingdom of God. And that's what we wanna offer the next generation. We wanna help your child or student grow in what the Bible calls a flourishing life. And that's a life that results in a, in a growing faith, resilient mental health, solid relational skills, strong character. And yes, this series is for parents, but not just for parents. This is a series for anyone who loves a child or simply believes that, what we, that we have to do better for the next generation. We ran across a great article titled, Why Your Kids Need Five Other Adults in Their Lives. This article contends that children need more than just their parents. Kids need other adults in their lives, teachers, coaches, church youth leaders, family friends, and extended family. These are positive role models who reinforce Christian values and do things parents can't do. The article illustrates this by saying you have a whole bunch of contacts like in your phone. I think in my phone, I have a little over 3,000. You might have more, you might have less, but we also have only a handful of what they call favorites. The article says that every kid needs to be a favorite to five other adults. Some of you aren't parents, but you have kids that are your favorite, that are not your own. The article says that if we could be that for this next generation, it quotes and says, we might indeed be raising a wider, more secure, more grounded, more Christ-centered, more joyful generation than we've ever seen in a long time. I mean, wouldn't you love to see that? So, listen to me. If you're a teacher, coach, kid city, student community leader, family friend, and uncle grandparent, this series is also for you. While Jesus didn't have his own kids, it seems he was a favorite for kids. We see this in the story about Jesus and some little kids in the book of Mark. Now, I'm going to put the text up for you to read along but I want to offer you a little different take on what might have happened. (laughs) So Jesus is chilling with his disciples one day when a bunch of parents come up to him with their kids and they say, hey, Jesus, can you bless these little rugrats of ours? But before the parents can get close enough to Jesus, the disciples intercede and we're like, ah, no way, not today. Jesus is way too busy for that. Plus, he's not big, not a big fan of sticky fingers and runny noses. That's when Jesus interrupts and says, hold on, guys. Let the children come to me. Don't you know that the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these littles? And then he adds, listen up, fellas. You gotta have faith like a child to enter the kingdom of God. And let's be real. 
Kids have way more fun than you do anyway. And with that, Jesus scoops up these kiddos, starts high-fiving, fist-bumping, and blessing all around him. Now, the key verse in this story is verse 15. Then it says, Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And here's a fun twist. While it is our responsibility to teach our kids the U plus life, Jesus is saying, if we pay attention, these kids will also teach us too. We learn from each other. So today, I want us to talk about what kids teach us and what we teach kids about the U plus life. I imagine Jesus pointing to the children and saying to his disciples, I want you to be like these kids. Jesus uses kids to explain that the kingdom of God, it's not a place where status, power, or prestige are important. Rather, the kingdom is a place where we let go of those things to receive what God has for us with open hands and an open heart. Now, this wasn't a special group of children that surrounded Jesus in that moment. They were kids just like our kids, just like the kids that are in Kid City, just like the little people that are in your life. And if we pay close attention to them, we will learn lessons about the kingdom of God. So what do kids teach us? Well, first, kids teach us to be dependent on God. There's this moment, parents, you'll resonate with this, when your child is handed to you after he or she is born and you realize everything about that child's life is depending on you. They need help getting to sleep. They need help to eat. They need help being bathed. They need help being clothed. <laughs> and, and even though it doesn't, doesn't stay that way forever, every skill your child is going to learn from speaking to walking to dressing to playing is going to be taught to them by you. They are totally dependent. Now, as adults, we kind of pursue independence, not dependency. As adults, it feels a little embarrassing to need a lot of help. But this is precisely why the Bible talks about our need for God. There's this beautiful passage of scripture where the apostle Paul tells us of the kind of relationship we're supposed to have with God. And it says this, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> that word Abba, it means to cry, Hey, Daddy, Daddy. There's a song we sing around here that, that, that I love. And the chorus comes from this passage. And it sings, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Do you see? We're invited to be children of God, totally dependent. We don't need to live as slaves, simply obeying orders. We don't need to be afraid, looking over our shoulder, motivated by fear, but instead, we're invited to be children, sons and daughters that actually are totally dependent on our Heavenly Father. And if we watch our kids, they'll teach us this kingdom dependency. Another aspect of the kingdom of God our children teach us is that we're wired to be relational. Have you paid attention to teaching, teenagers especially? I love whenever I'm shopping, maybe in a mall somewhere, and you notice that teenagers there because inevitably they move in packs. You almost never find a 14-year-old simply walking around a mall confidently on their own. Teenagers kind of sense their need for each other. They're hormonal. They're vulnerable. Yet they know that if there's two or three or even four or five of them together, they can be confident, they can laugh, and they can even begin to show glimpses of their true self. Kids know they need others. They're wired for connection. They long to feel close, first with their parents, but then with others. And they're unapologetic about their need to be with their friends, to be with others. The book of Ecclesiastes puts it this way. The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. We are made for connection with each other, just as we're made for connection with God. And the more you pay attention to kids, the more permission it gives you to remember that you're not actually meant to do this life alone. You need other people. I need other people. We all need other people. 
And what kids do is kids teach us the priority of kingdom relationships. Now, I love these lessons that we can learn as we observe our kids. It's an amazing kind of kingdom paradox that the youngest can actually teach the oldest about the U plus life. And while that's true, make no mistake about it. It is our responsibility to teach our kids and to lead our kids to become followers of Jesus. We are the ones that God has entrusted with showing the next generation how to live this U plus life. Before I move forward and talk about what we teach our kids, let me just pause for a moment and speak to those of you who feel like you're struggling in your parenting journey or carrying loads of guilt. Here's the thing. We all, all make mistakes as parents. <laughs> My oldest, Amy, who, uh, who's now an adult, will often, she'll kind of pat me on the back. She'll smile at me and say, Dad, you did the best you could. And it's true. We try to do the best we can. And the truth is, even when we do things right, it's no guarantee that our kids will make decisions, the kind of decisions that we hope they make. God's grace covers our mistakes. And God has certainly not given up on any of our kids to find their way back to Him. But for those of you who are in the thick of parenting, young children right now, the writer of Proverbs challenges us with these words. And it says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. And we train and we teach our kids through both what we believe, but also how we live. Through what we believe and how we live. So let's start with what we believe. Parents, our kids need to learn to believe from us. I want you to be clear. You need to be clear about what you believe with your child and share those beliefs with real conviction. Let me set up a hypothetical situation. Um, let's say you overheard a parent talking to their sixth grade boy and the parent said, you know, when it comes to school, I'm not really gonna influence you. I want you to decide which days you're gonna go to school, which days you wanna stay home and play video games. You get to decide. I think it's my job just to be supportive. Now, if you heard that, you'd probably think, well, first, that parent doesn't believe that education is very important. And second, that parent is kind of implicitly teaching their child that having an education doesn't really matter. And lastly, you'd think, man, that's one of the most ridiculous things I've heard in a very, very, very long time, right? So we tell our kids something very different. We tell them, you know, as long as you're in the house and I'm paying the bills, well, maybe we don't say that. Our parents said that. But we'd probably say something more like, you know what? We value education. And while you're living in our home, it's your job to go to school and get an education. We believe a good education is very important. And we say it without hesitancy, with clarity, and with conviction. But then we tend to get fuzzy when it comes to matters of faith. I think one of the great parenting errors of our generation it was when I hear a parent explain how they parent by saying, well, you know, when it comes to matters of faith, I don't really try to influence my kids. I think it's their job to kind of figure it out, and it's my job just to be supportive. Now, if you've said that, I really do. I want, to, I want you to rethink this. Because when we say something like that or live like that, we're implicitly teaching our kids, I don't really have a conviction about Jesus. And my faith doesn't really matter enough to encourage you one way or the other. And it probably really shouldn't matter to you either. Do, do you see? Implicitly, we're saying it doesn't matter what you believe, because if it did, it would matter to me what you believe. In the Ferguson house, um, we would tell our kids, we're Christ followers. And we want you to live out all three connections to your faith, a connection with God, a connection with the church, and a connection with the world. <clears throat> and if we got pushed back, and yeah, we did, we'd say, listen, when you leave this house as an adult, you'll get to make your own choice. But this is what your mother and I believe. And I would encourage you, parents, that's why God gave kids parents. You need to speak with clarity and conviction regarding what you believe. But even more important than what we say we believe is how we live. Because who you are is what you'll reproduce in your kids. If you are your kids to have a relationship with God, you have to have a relationship with God and let your kids see it. If you want your kids to have a meaningful, accountable relationship in this church, you have to be in a small group and invest in meaningful relationships in the church and let your kids see it. 
If you want your kids to make a difference in the world, you need to use your time, talents, and treasures to make a difference in the world. And your kids should be able to see it. Please take this in, okay? Parents, you will reproduce how you live. And if we don't say it and we don't live it, our kids, our kids will have to learn some very painful lessons through the school of hard knocks. And let's face it, all right? Let me remind you, that's what happened to many of us. Many of us have traveled a very bumpy and very painful road until we finally found our way back to God. And many of us know what it's like to live disconnected from God, disconnected from each other and our purpose in the world. And if you want something different and better for your kids, you need to tell them what you believe and show them by how you live. All right, I, I wanna wrap this up with a, with a two-part challenge. Challenge number one, pursue the you plus life yourself. We will continue to challenge you with this offer of a U plus. We're offering you the opportunity to have what we're calling a U plus conversation, and then for you to create your own U plus plan as a growing disciple of Jesus. We've had over 400 people do this, and, and here's what they are saying. My name is Delia, and I've been attending community for five years. My U plus conversation was, it felt like a first date. <laughs> it really did. Um, I hadn't ever had a conversation like that. It was more so me just kind of saying out loud a lot of the things that I thought to myself. I felt almost relieved saying a lot of that stuff out loud. It's not something that I talk about with other people often. Um, it was just kind of like between me and God. So it was really cool to have somebody else affirm where I was and that I was doing like, I was on the right path. I'm sure a lot of people don't get to have the conversations around their journey with God. Um, they maybe feel that they're going to be judged or they maybe feel like they're not where they should be. I can see a lot of resistance around that and that's not what this conversation is about at all. This conversation is more so about your needs. If I want a deeper relationship, what does that look like? If I know where I'm at with God and I want to you know, bring more to the table and do more, how do I do that? Don't be afraid to have a conversation like that because, you know, they say God sends people in your lives for a reason. And I think this is one of those things where he could really work through somebody in your life. My name is Joe and I've been coming to community for eight years. So the pre-work was great. It really set up for a great conversation to be had. And in that experience of having a conversation with someone who I had, who I love, who I have a ton of respect for, it gave me a chance to really explore what's next and what's more for me. But really, the conversation was about me and my relationship with God. There was nobody judging, there was nobody testing, there was no wrong answers. And that to me was the best part is that it just was a reflection point for me to say, hey, these are your answers with your relationship, your personal relationship, where do you wanna go with this? One of the things that I have asked God to do in my life is to bring divine appointments into my day. And this is really special for me because I've always felt that I've struggled with wanting to share my love of Jesus with others and how to do that. And through the Holy Spirit, through that time, through that prayer, these divine appointments have been coming again and again and again. And it has been amazing in my day to just say, Holy Spirit, you lead this day and I'm just here with you. And it's been wonderful. It's been, it's been absolutely wonderful. My name is Berna and I've been at Community for five years. You know, when they say do pre-work, I thought I was going to have to literally write an essay. So I was real hesitant about even signing up for it. I said, oh, I can do that another time. And it was only nine questions, you know? So it really prepared me for the conversation. And the conversation really made me dig a little deeper about some issues that I had pushed down that I wasn't aware of. And what really came out of that conversation was I needed to arm myself with God's Word on those days and those moments when I felt that fear, that shame, that guilt. So one of my goals was learn my scripture, memorize my scripture, and remember to arm yourself when the enemy tries to get in to tell you that you're not worthy. I am worthy. Remember, Jesus and his disciples not only did ministry together, they did life together. And that's what he wants for us to live the U plus life. 
you know, not on your own, not trying to figure out things on your own and go off and do your own thing. It's that inward out that where he's going to do a work in you. And then you can be that next influence for that next person. What you've been through can give that person the encouragement. You know what? If she can go through that, just like me, I can, I can change too. It's all about you, you plus. It's all about you plus. We're never meant to do this alone. He did not mean for us to do it alone. He didn't. He didn't. Remember, you will reproduce who you are. So go ahead, scan the QR code, sign up for a U plus conversation. And I would say, do it for you and do it for your kid. All right, here's challenge number two. Challenge number two is parent your kids in the U plus life. I am so excited to announce the release of the U plus resources for kids. Our Kid City team has put together a resource so you can start intentionally having a conversation with your child about the relationship with God. It's going to be really good. Make sure you get those and make sure you use them. And a student community edition is also coming out this summer during our student community summer camp. So also be looking for those soon. To close, because today is Mother's Day, I want to offer a prayer specifically for our mothers. Now, I know that Mother's Day can be hard for many. Those who are disconnected from their moms are those who wish to be a mom, but are not yet. And, and you do have our prayers. But we do know that being a mother is both a great joy and a tremendous challenge. So on this day, we'd like to just take a moment and pray specifically for all the moms. So moms, let me pray a blessing over you. Father God, I want to say just a special prayer for all the moms. I ask that you give them courage. I ask that you give them a perseverance. And Lord, I also ask that you give them wisdom. As a steward, really what is the greatest responsibility of all, and that's the lives of the next generation. And we ask your blessing on them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for the rest of us, we have a role to play in the lives of children as well. Every kid, remember, needs to be a favorite to other adults. So what I encourage you to do is bring to mind a favorite child that maybe is not your own. You got it? Let me play, pray a blessing over us as a community as we invest in our students and our children. Father, I want to pray for us as a community of people that we do prioritize the lives of students and kids, that we see the potential in them, that we see the growing faith in them, and that we encourage that, we nurture that. And as they look at us, let us be people that model for them what we're calling this U plus life. Lord, I pray for that kind of a blessing on our community. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In these next few moments, I want to invite you to remember with me that the life Jesus gives us came through His sacrificial death. In 2 Corinthians 5, we read, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus willingly took on our sin so that we could be freed from sin and find our way back to God. We now can be in right relationship with the Father. Let's take these next few moments to reflect on the love, beauty, and power of our Savior as we prepare to receive communion together. Declaring there is
is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus moment, let's remember the sacrifice of our Savior together, the bread that represents His body broken for us. The cup that represents His blood shed for us. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for the gift of children 
the next generation, for the young people that are in our midst. I ask that you will empower and equip us, whether we are parents, whether we are leaders, whether we are strong figures in the lives of the next generation. I ask that you will equip us to help them form and live their own U plus life, a life that is close to you and that loves you. We love you so much, Lord. Amen. Before you go, let me remind you that the Kids City U Plus resources are now available online at kidscity.org. If you're a parent, you'll want to check those out as you lead your kids in the U Plus life. And don't forget, the opportunity to have a U Plus conversation with someone in the church is still available for you. Thanks so much for joining us today. As always, you can find information about everything happening here at Community at communitychristian.info. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you right back here next week for Community Online.